Hi everyone, it's Tony Tom Logan with another video for you. And if you weren't aware, Alder Lake can actually support DDR4 and DDR5 memory. Now, that does mean that we need different motherboards for DDR4 and DDR5, and I haven't got any directly comparable motherboards as yet. So I haven't got like a Strix D4 and a Strix D5, for example. So the closest I can do at the moment is the Tough Gaming is the only DDR4 board I have at launch. So we are going to see whether the difference between DDR4 and DDR5 is very much. And I have tested both the i5 and the i9 on both motherboards so that we can really see if it's worth investing, at least at the moment, into the much more expensive DDR5 memory. Okay then Pete, so just to cover the basics, all I've done with the two boards is gone in and enabled XMP on the motherboard kit, on the memory kits. Now, with the D4, I used some Corsair Dominate uh, Platinum, 3600 megahertz, CAS, uh, I can't remember now, CAS 18, I believe it was, kits. Not massively quick, not massively tight, kind of sits in the middle because I do have some very low latency CAS 14, 4000 megahertz stuff, but that is both quite expensive and also quite difficult to get hold of. It's not something you can just go to scan, drop into your basket and purchase. They're quite limited. I was even lucky to have got a review sample. So I did think that would be a little bit unfair and a little bit weighted and I knew I'd get moaning people from Intel saying it wasn't fair. And then this kit, uh, oh by the way, this kit's $174.99. This kit is $294.99, so £124 more expensive. It's CAS 38, 5200 megahertz. So I've dropped them into their respective boards. They've got the same cooling, the same cooling patterns, the same cooling profiles, the same coolers, the same uh, power supply, the same graphics card. The graphics card is an, uh, a 2080 Ti. I've literally done nothing else other than enable XMP. And then the results that were spat out were actually quite eye-opening. Now, when you start with uh, settings or benchmarks that will show the difference, either... Uh, um, memory benchmarks and it's basically about bandwidth so you can quite easily see the bottom of the graph is ddr4 the upper part of the graph is ddr5 it really doesn't take a rocket science but that's just a very specific memory based benchmark then when you go on to something like either cpu benchmarks is where uh, it does show a little bit of difference between the two but not a massive amount. And if you have a look at some of them, for argument's sake, like Zlib, Zlib actually did better on DDR4. So it's the second set of bars down, 161850. So there's a bit of hit and miss with that. And then in Blender, again, you can see that the DDR5 was just in front, but it's like a tenth of a second. So I can show you Cinebench. Uh, and there's not a lot of difference between that. It's actually, it trades places. One minute it's one, one minute it's the other. We did a lot of Cinebench runs. We did Cinebench 15, we did Cinebench 20, we did Cinebench 23. You can go to the OC3 website and see all of the other results, all of the gaming results. You can go and see everything. Uh, Far Cry 6 did like DDR5. Uh, a bit. Um, it, it's one of these weird ones, excuse me. So if you have a look between the two, so the uh, average was higher on the DDR5, but the minimum was higher on the DDR4 for the i9. And then it was the opposite way around for the, the DDR, the, for the i5. And then when you go onto Far Cry 5, you do see with the i9 that it goes, DDR4 pushes in front, but only by three frames. Whereas in reality, the minimum was like eight frames different. So that's a nice chunk different. Uh, and then it's, uh, but weirdly, when you go onto the i5, below, it's the opposite way around. So the DDR5 was faster on the i5. But here's the other weird thing, is it is very much hit and miss. There is no, the i5 sometimes likes DDR4, the i5 sometimes likes DDR5. It does genuinely seem to be almost application specific. And my overall thoughts 
upon this at launch is yes ddr5 is much faster and it's very much a spec list grabbing hold of new tech and it is a very nice thing because at the end of the day it's you know it's brand new tech it is running quicker but when you look at the results themselves at least with the results that i have done and i have done gaming results i have done some very intensive tasks like blender for example they haven't seemed to have given this a much bigger difference definitely not 120 pounds worth of difference and i think if i'd have gone with a low latency 4000 megahertz kit that i got i probably could have got almost the DDR4 to have like one on more accounts. So my advice at launch is this. I've been listening to the uh, industry and the vendors and they have been telling me that they're getting, they're having difficulties getting enough DDR5 in. I know a certain brand made a big claim that they were going to put loads into the channel and promise that people that stuff and it just hasn't happened. I also know that another massive brand uh, is running with 20% of the promised stock that they were going to have. And I don't mean in the UK, I mean globally. So DDR5 is going to be a bit like RTX graphics cards at launch. And also a bit like DDR4 memory and uh, solid state drives were at launch. They're going to be very expensive and you're going to have to grab them while you can. But I'm not necessarily telling you to. I'm not telling you to go out and panic buy. I'm just saying that the higher end boards that require the higher end memory, the higher end memory is going to be difficult. And the fact that we've only got 5200 megahertz kits, I haven't had a 56 kit through, haven't had a 6000 megahertz kit here yet, and they're having difficulties even making those. So weirdly, amazingly, if you're going to be gaming and you want to buy Z690, and I stress this point, if you have decided Z690 is for you and you want to go and buy yourself, a setup and you've decided whether you want i5 or i9 or even an i7 but I've not tested that but you've made your choice I would actually say right now that I think you're better off buying one of the DDR4 boards because none of them are particularly badly specced they all seem to have fairly good VRMs on them and good specs and like the tough for example would normally be a really cheap board but in reality, looking at this thing, it actually ends up looking more like a previous generation Strix. So it's a much better spec board. Yes, it's a better, uh, more expensive price. But because of the memory side of it and the price and the fact that, let's face facts, PCR Express 4 solid state drives or MVMEs, I should say, 7,000 mega, sorry, 7,000 megabits a second available. So seven gig transfer speeds. That's crazy throughput. And you can get them for good money now as well. They don't have to cost you a kidney. I think a well-placed system on this with then trying to find and source a good graphics card to go in it, which I know in itself is very difficult. But I think if you went this route, I think you'd be better off spending that little bit more money, maybe going up a tier with your graphics card if you're lucky enough to have an option at the, desk, uh, sorry, at the checkout to choose between the two. I would probably spend more money on a graphics card, go uh, DDR4, PCR Express 4, solid state drives. And I think at the end of the day, if you're worried about like having a hero and stuff like that, then it's, it is just going to cost you an awful lot more money. Whereas this is going to give you the same, if not better performance. And if you manage to save that extra few extra hundred quid and go from the graphics card you may have wanted up to maybe the next rung up so let's say going from a 3070 ti to a 3080 maybe just picking those numbers out of my head then i think at the end of the day for gaming that's going to suit you better and i think if it really did come down to uh like content creation and throughput then to be perfectly honest you could still sit here but go up to the next cpu instead so if you're looking at i5 and DDR5, maybe go uh, DDR4 and then i9, because you could swing it that way. It's all going to come down to you, but the, the thing that I did want to bring you today was with the testing that I've done, and you can go and see it all on the website, there really isn't much to pick between the two. And I definitely don't think anyone that's looking at building a system that's going to be predominantly for gaming or gaming and then a bit of content creation, unless you're a professional, and I do mean like professional use, at the moment, I don't think we've got a need for DDR5. And we're just going to have to see how things evolve, 
memory prices, that sort of thing. Uh, programs that are actually going to be able to utilize and saturate the bandwidth that DDR5 has available. Or the only other thing is RAM disks. And that's a completely different re review in itself. And I do think you might see me doing one of those very soon. But for now, because I have a lot more videos to film, this has been the tiniest one with another video for you out. Love you, sis. Thank <laughs> you.